Welcome to DevOps Info Channel. Today we are going to take a look at how to manage the updates and patches uh, for your VMs, which is running in the Microsoft uh, Azure, as well as in your uh, on-premise data center. The complicated work of tracking and deploying the software updates on uh, the machines, which is running in Azure, as well as in your uh, or data center, uh, can always be challenging to that means. Uh, but with the aid of the resources that is available uh, in the Microsoft uh, Azure, uh, we can uh, easily handle the update management in, in a very smooth manner. To preserve the operational effectiveness, uh, address the security concerns, uh, and also address the dangers of growing cybersecurity threats, uh, an efficient software update management procedure is always required. Uh, however, the efficient software update management uh, requires a regular ongoing attention because of the ever evolving nature of the technology that needs uh, an update on the existing systems um, and also the persistent appearance of the new security concerns. We also we always need to take a look at that. Uh, there are a few methods of doing that. Uh, the first thing uh, is like you can enable the update management from the automation account. Uh, for example, what you see here, this is uh, enabling the update management from the automation account. And the second one is enable the update management uh, from browsing through the Azure portal. For example, if you have a VM, you can just always go and navigate to the VM and uh, manage the update from the portal. And the last, uh, the third one is enable the update management from the runbook. Like uh, in the automation, you have something called runbooks. You can browse the gallery and enable uh, the update management by importing the required runbooks uh, for the update management. And the last one is enabling the update management from the Azure VM itself. Uh, but today in this video, uh, we are going to take a look at how effectively we could manage them via the Azure Automation account. Uh, so before going further, I would like to still uh, give some uh, you know, overview of the Azure Automation Update Management uh, from the, uh, the Microsoft uh, website itself. Uh, so, so this is the update management process, uh, which you could see a diagram uh, well illustrated uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Microsoft website. Uh, so Actually, the update management works with the Azure uh, monitor logs, uh, which is the log analytic workspace. If you already work with the log analytic workspace, uh, you already uh, have uh, information on how uh, the log analytic workspace sends information to uh, the Azure. So uh, it has a log analytic agent uh, uh, extension, which is uh, installed on the Azure VM. And also, if you want, uh, let's say, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, do the same process for a VM uh, or a a mission which is running outside of Azure, you need to do the same process. So for example, uh, if you take a look at this is my uh, laptop, uh, a home workstation, where I have also integrated this to the uh, update management. So all I need to do is uh, just uh, take the workspace ID uh, and then uh, uh, do the workspace E. Uh, in first install the agent, uh, the log analytics agent, uh, and then uh, run that and then configure the required workspace ID and the key. Uh, the mode when it says the Microsoft Monitor Agent has successfully uh, connected to the workspace, then uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine, and uh, I'm my, my laptop is sending the required logs uh, to the uh, uh, to the automation account. So the first prerequisite for the update management is like you need to have Azure subscription, um, and uh, you need to have an automation account created because uh, these two are the main prerequisites for. Uh, maintaining the update management uh, from uh, the Microsoft uh, Azure. So um, the, the process, like if you if you could see, uh, the it's dependent on the core component log analytics uh, agent, uh, which is sending the logs, uh, which would assess the, the apply, update deployment status of that particular host. So the first thing is like, uh, once you install and configure the workspace, uh, it sends uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the window, uh, sorry, uh, the reports the status to the Azure automation account. And the automation account checks for the update assessment. Like uh, there is an option to do the update assessments. We would take a, a look at that in a few minutes. So uh, you can define a deployment schedule. You can review and up update the deployment status. So. Uh, the automation account is going to check that uh, as a second task and uh, post uh, checking that part uh, it is going to uh, basically uh, check for the maintenance window on deployment uh, we have an option to uh, schedule a maintenance uh, window because it's not a good idea to uh, push the update just like that uh, whenever you're in a production because it would uh, uh, definitely impact the productivity so it's always recommended to do the update only off business hours 
So uh, as a result of that, uh, we have an option to uh, schedule the maintenance window, uh, probably an off business service on a weekly, uh, uh, once in a month or uh, twice in a month. Like it depends on how, how is your uh, update mechanism in your organization. So you can define that uh, in the maintenance window and uh, based on the maintenance window, it is uh, going to uh, trigger the update uh, on uh, the VMs uh, which has been targeted and then uh, it is uh, going to apply the updates and later it would report the status back to the automation account. And uh, finally, in the automation account, we would be able to see the status of the completed updates, the updates which is uh, not installed and also the updates uh, uh, you know, uh, which needs some attention. So all these kind of things you'll be able to see in the uh, monitoring part. Uh, but one important thing which I need to tell you is like, uh, especially uh, the system which you are configuring for the uh, update management in the log analytics agent, uh, you need to make sure that you have only one workspace configured because uh, having a machine registered for more than one log analytic workspace uh, is not supported. So you need to make sure uh, a uh, few minutes back, I show you the Microsoft monitoring agent. So that should have only one uh, uh, one log analytic workspace, uh, so that uh, it would be able to do the update management uh, from the uh, automation account. Uh, if you if you have configured for multiple log analytic workspace, uh, it's simply not going to work. Uh, yeah. So here uh, you can have the connected source windows, Linux, uh, and then uh, there are some supported versions and description. I'm going to share this link on the YouTube video. You can always take a look at that. And uh, it's, it's a very nice uh, illustration of how it works uh, for the reference. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, see how it is uh, working in action. So all you need to do is just go into the automation accounts, uh, click on the automate, uh, and uh, scroll all the way down. You have something called update management. In the update management, uh, Okay, you see, uh, this is the overall status of uh, how, like, uh, what is the current status of update. But uh, in order to get to this state, it's very simple. Uh, just click on update management and you have to click on add Azure VMs. The moment when you click on add Azure VMs, it is going to check all the VMs that is uh, available in your uh, subscription or uh, that is available in your resource group uh, based on your. Uh, uh, Permission. If you're a global admin, uh, uh, have access all to the subscriptions, then you'll be able to see the all the VMs. So here, uh, I've already enabled uh, like uh, two of the VMs uh, because uh, uh, to show up for the demo, I just enabled uh, sorry three of the VMs. Uh, you see, it's already it says the status is already enabled. Uh, but if you see uh, two of the VMs, it says cannot enable because it says VM reports to workspace SOC monitoring. Because as I said, uh, I have uh, added these two to two uh, log analytic workspace. I wanted to show it as an example. So that's the reason uh, it is not able to, by default, the update management is uh, reporting to the default workspace, uh, which is uh, present in the Azure AD. So uh, since I have enabled it to a different workspace SOC monitor, it's not able to connect because here for the Azure, what happens when you click on enable? It is just simply going to connect to the default uh, workspace uh, log analytics and and going to uh, do the update management. In this case, for the other two hosts, I have already configured uh, a workspace called SOC monitoring. I did this for the the Sentinel uh, tutorial uh, previously. So as a result of that, uh, these two VMs are not able to establish a connection because it's simply not supported uh, for multiple uh, workspaces. So you, you need to keep always this in mind. So here uh, it also gives you a, a summary of uh, what are the VMs that is ready to enable. I have one left uh, which I could enable uh, and then cannot enable this too. Yeah. So this is the way how you do it for adding the Azure VMs. But uh, in order to add a non-Azure mission, uh, what you need to do is you need to download the log analytics agent, uh, configure the workspace and uh, the default workspace, uh, add the workspace key. And post after doing that, you have to just simply click on manage missions the moment when you click on manage missions, uh, it would uh, list you the missions that are sending the logs uh, to the default workspace. Because in my case, uh, I have uh, three of my uh, personal uh, devices. So uh, I just configured the, the workspaces, uh, uh, the log analytics. Uh, I installed the agent and configured the workspace to send the logs. So as a result of that, I see three of them have the uh, readiness to 
uh, enable for the update manager. So all I can do is, for example, if I want to do only select information, select this. Uh, this is the workstation home. Uh, just click on it and uh, do a enable. That's it. So the one when you do it, uh, I no need to worry about the updates on uh, performing the updates on my uh, personal uh, uh, laptop. It would be able to uh, complete uh, from this way. So this is the first thing that you need to be aware of. And the second thing is like you could schedule an update deployment. For example, uh, I can do a weekly update. That's not uh, good, uh, but uh, it depends. Like uh, how is your update mechanism? How you are handling the security updates? How you are handling the feature updates? That's very important. Uh, so you need to keep in mind uh, based on the current uh, update mechanism, like how you do the feature updates, how you do the security updates. The same thing can be implemented with the update deployment schedule. So here, uh, for example, uh, in our case, it's operating system Windows. I'm selecting Windows and add a groups or a machine. So you can just uh, select uh, the subscription. OK. And then uh, what are the updates I need to include? Uh, if I do that, it is going to check for the particular update. And if I want to click on exclude, I can also in exclude a particular update. For example, if you see some update which is uh, uh, causing a bug in the system, you can always exclude that particular update. Uh, yeah. And uh, if you want to add some pre scripts and post scripts, uh, you can also do that. Uh, if you have any customization on the particular uh, host, you can always do that. Uh, and I have already created one uh, for this demo. I would show you uh, in the deployment schedule. See, for example, I created one called monthly. And the moment uh, when when you go that uh, when you go into that, uh, all the options uh, would be listed. Oh, it is taking some time. Okay, so let's go back into new and let's create one. That's not a problem. So let's do a weekly update. Uh, here groups to update here it is uh, choose the uh, resource group ah, you need to create an azure group and there is also non azure groups so uh, the update is dependent on uh, Azure and uh, non-Azure groups. Uh, so um, by default, there is also a non-Azure group. Here, you, if you want to target it to a particular uh, group of VMs, then uh, you need to have uh, Azure groups. Uh, so yeah, you need to keep that in mind. And the next thing is like about the configure. So here, you can include and exclude, which we saw. Uh, so I'm not in this demo, I'm not going to do uh, anything. Uh, I'm leaving it up to you to uh, define this part. And uh, in the schedule settings, this is very uh, interesting. So here you can go and schedule when you want to do the update. Uh, for some reason today, the uh, this particular part uh, of the Azure is uh, uh, really slow. Uh, that's the reason we are not able to uh, proceed further specifically on this part. So here, uh, or on this schedule, what what you what you'll be able to see is like when you want to do the schedule, and uh, uh, and if you see the pre scripts and pro post scripts, if you have some customization on the particular host, uh, you can uh, add a particular scripts to uh, adjust that. And uh, the maintenance window, we have two hours. You can also uh, put whatever the maintenance window you want based on your uh, requirement. And the reboot options, you have the reboot uh, if required or uh, never reboot. And uh, you say only reboot will not install the updates. So you can choose whatever the option you want based on your requirement. Um, and uh, going back uh, to the portal, you see uh, like uh, this is the missions, which is uh, already uh, present on uh, the update management. It says, OK, uh, the machine name, the compliance. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the status that is coming uh, as a result of uh, the update results, the update mechanism, and then you, you see the update re readiness agents. Uh, this is like something: are your agents ready for the update? Uh, uh, because uh, the, the, there is a possibility your agents are not uh, uh, reporting the the update, uh, the the logs uh, to the the automation account. Uh, so it checks for the update agent re readiness. It says yes, and platform is Azure, and 
it also gives you the security missing updates, critical missing updates, uh, and other missing updates. If you want to take a more deep dive into what are the updates that is missing, you can always click on the missing updates and it is showing, okay, what are the updates that is missing? You can select and always schedule a, um, you know, a quick uh, update deployment and then you know include the updates. You can mention include the updates and target it to the PCs, uh, whichever you want, and the VMs, whichever you want, it is going to push the updates. So, at the end, it is going to show you the list of non-compliant missions, missions that needs attention, missing updates, uh, and also the failed update de deployments. Uh, you also have a history tab, which would also show you uh, the status of the last update. Uh, for example, in our case, uh, this one was created uh, today afternoon for testing this. Uh, so it shows, okay, uh, it succeeded. Uh, and then uh, clicking on that will also give you some, some information. Uh, okay, so one mission object update status it says okay it's, it has been succeeded uh, and then uh, you can see all logs output and if if there are any errors you can also see uh, so overall I see uh, you know uh, you can do a very good uh, compliance assessment on the update uh, and also before you deploy software updates to your machine uh, you can review the update compliance assessment uh, for enabled uh, VMs. Uh, for each software update uh, and also the compliance state is recorded and after evaluation is complete, uh, it's corrected and forwarded in bulk uh, to the Azure monitor logs. That's how the update mechanism is working uh, when you do the, uh, the update management via the automation accounts. Uh, on a Windows uh, machine, uh, the compliance uh, is run every uh, 12 hours by default uh, and it is initiated uh, with uh, 15 minutes of the log analytics agent for Windows because the log analytics takes 15 minutes to send uh, the logs to the uh, the Azure. So it, it, it could, you could see like 15 minutes of delay after the updates uh, uh, status is reported to the VM, uh, to, to the automation accounts. So overall, uh, I see this to be a very effective software update management process, uh, which is really helpful. Um, and uh, you can use this update management in the Azure automation to manage the operating system update for your Windows, as well as Linux virtual machines. That, uh, in Azure physical uh, or VMs, even in the on-premise environment. Uh, that's what I wanted to convey uh, about uh, the update management. Uh, I would really suggest you uh, take a look at this, uh, and this would really help in uh, effectively manage your uh, managing your updates uh, completely from uh, the Microsoft Cloud perspective uh, using just the automation account, uh, and uh, it would be uh, really helpful for the admins in uh, easing uh, up uh, their uh, operational tasks in the in the Windows update. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you.